just to slow that water down a little bit or the little bit of water that's still flowing. Funny enough, we always go for that frozen look in our waterfall photography. All of it's frozen today. Hello everyone, this is Waterfall Joe, and it is a cold January day here in Northwest Connecticut. We're at Kent Falls State Park. Let's go check it out. So I'm a big fan of the Holy Trinity, the Magic Trinity, whatever Trinity you want to call it in terms of lenses. You got your wide angle, your mid range, and your telephoto. Those three lenses will cover almost every photo you need to take. But that's a lot of glass, that's a lot of money, and it's a lot of weight in your camera bag. A few years ago, Tamron came out with the lens that in my opinion, will substitute two of the lenses for one. This is it right here. Let's see if you can see it. This is the Tamron 35 to 150 F2 to 2.8. If you're a big landscape waterfall guy like me, sometimes you wanna get the wide angle shot, but then you wanna zoom in more to a detail shot. And before you had to switch from a 24 to 70 to a 70 to 200. This lens right here will cover all of that for you in one lens. And if you're a low light shooter, it has an F2 to 2.8 aperture, so incredible low light performance. It uses 82 millimeter filters. So I have a, a polarizer and a ND filter on there because we're about to go shoot some waterfalls and I want to get the silky water effect. What about this one? So this is my Nikon Z 17 to 28 millimeter F2.8. Now Nikon currently makes three wide angle lenses for the Z mount. This lens, a 14 to 30 f4 and a 14 to 24 2.8 s that is of course the nicest of the bunch and it's also the most expensive a little overkill for me and i prefer this one because it uses smaller 67 millimeter filters also while maintaining a 2.8 aperture so if i ever go out and do milky way this will be the perfect lens So my favorite feature about the 35-150 is how versatile it is. At 35 millimeters, I'm able to get a full shot of this entire scene here. I'll put it on screen for you here. This is absolutely breathtaking. But then I'm able to zoom all the way in. Let's manually focus here because it's a little bit dark. And now I'm able to get that up close and personal ice texture all with one lens. This is a photographer's paradise. There's multiple tiers of waterfalls. We started at the bottom. We've gone up two or three tiers here and there's still the big one up at the top we're about to head up to. All right, so I'm out shooting with the 35 to 150 here. And this is the perfect example of being able to use one lens to kind of do everything. So let's get set up here. Let's, I don't want to shoot vertical. I want to shoot horizontal for this. So let's back this out to 35 and take a shot here. Let's set up. So here we go. This was shot at 35 millimeters and you're able to get quite a wide shot here. But now let's zoom in. Let's use this lens for all of what it's worth. Let's zoom in to 150 here and let's get one of these up close and personal shots. I really like that part back there, how it plunges down, but it's totally frozen. But you can still see a little bit of the water back behind the frozen part. So let's get up close to that. All right, so same settings here. We're just gonna zoom into 150 now. Check that out. Now we're able to get that up close and personal shot all without having to switch lenses. I absolutely love this lens. I'm using a polarizer and a three-stop ND filter for just to slow that water down a little bit or the little bit of water that's still flowing. Funny enough, we always go for that frozen look in our waterfall photography. 
all of it's frozen today. So one comment about my new vlogging camera, the Nikon Z30. I absolutely love this camera and it's so small and compact to take with me. I'm gonna just take it everywhere. If you plan on buying one of these, get like 15 extra batteries. Now to give it credit, it is 12 degrees out here. And even my mighty Z62 with the Enio 15C battery that's made to last for 500 shots is struggling big time in the weather. My phone barely works, the touchscreen's not working, the Z30 battery, I can watch the bar go down. It's not a good day for cameras or electronics out here. But that's what we do as photographers. We come out in this environment for these shots. If you're thinking about getting a Z30, I absolutely love this camera. Just know an extra battery or two or three might be a good idea. Avoid the 12 degrees, the cold degree days because uh, it is struggling big time. We only got one more tier to go and then it's on to the big waterfall. It's right up there. Right around this corner is where the big, beautiful waterfall that starts this gorgeous cascade begins. And up there, I'm actually gonna pull out the 17 to 28 millimeter because I've been using the 35 to 150 this whole time. Well, once we get up top, we'll be able to pull out that wide angle to get the, uh, the full waterfall. So if you're considering winter activities, such as hiking and photo photographing waterfalls and when it's so cold, you should consider a set of crampons or ice spikes or whatever you want to call them. These things. These have saved my butt so many times today. It doesn't do you much good when it's snowing, but of course when there's ice, these spike right into the ice and it saves you a lot of hassle and you don't fall over. All right, we made it to the top. Here is the main attraction. This is Kent Falls, the top of the line, the best of the best, the top waterfall. All right, so I'm, now I'm switched over to the Nikon Z 17 to 28 f 2.8 lens. And that's gonna help us capture this beautiful wide scene we have here. There's a lot here, and I really just wanna capture the full waterfall. So 17 millimeters is gonna be perfect. Let's get a shot here so I can show you what 17 millimeters looks like. So for this photo, I'm using a three-stop ND filter as well as a circular polarizer to really help get, slow the water down a little bit, as well as a higher aperture and a low ISO. Did you get all that? I used to be a humongous fan of vertical shots, mostly because I posted them on Instagram all the time, and Instagram loves vertical, as we all know. I'm trying to stay away from Instagram recently, so I haven't been shooting vertical as much and also I wanted to challenge myself to shoot horizontal more. But this waterfall I actually think works out a lot better uh, sorry, vertically. I'll show you why. So here's the horizontal and here's the vertical. In my opinion, there's just a lot more to work with in the vertical. But this is something that you can experiment with and experiment around with. I'm using an L bracket and let me get you close up to this. So the, so the beauty of an L bracket is we can take our camera and now we have this bracket here. Uh, there we go, come on. So now you can go from vertical to horizontal very easily, just like this. So here's vertical and then all you have to do is flip it and there's horizontal. 
There's no messing with the ball head. There's no losing center of gravity here. This, this is the alternate way to easily switch back and forth. Thank you for tuning in today and watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you're ever in Connecticut, make it to Kent Falls. This is, this is the one to see in Connecticut. It is absolutely breathtaking in all seasons, even in winter when everything's frozen. I hope you like the images, and if you have any thoughts, please share them in the comments section below. If you like the videos, think about subscribing. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Thank you.